Okay, so we're back. And uh, what we did was we took some time and we went ahead and soldered on the wires onto the motors. Now, there's a wire, the wires come with the uh, kit, but um, what we did is we soldered on our own wire just because we wanted to have some longer cable just in case we wanted to wire it a different way. Um, never hurts to have a little bit longer wire than usual. The only thing I would recommend is since you're using these and it's directly connected with these fragile con uh, connectors onto the motor, be very careful when you handle the uh, wires because you could easily break them, uh, break off the connectors. Not really worried about breaking the wires, just more the connectors. So the other thing that we did was, and we followed the robot shop's recommendation, was wrapping these in uh, in electrical tape. Not sure if you can actually see that or not, but uh, we wrapped them in electrical tape at the ends here. Now we did it on all four wires instead of just the top two, um, just to be consistent and to keep it, you know, contained. Um, a little smidge did. We took off like an inch of, of uh, electrical tape and we just kind of wrapped it around two or three times. Gave it a good, uh, you know, nice, neat, uh, consistent feeling and that was about it. That'll keep that from making any contacts with the actual <coughs> PCB, the uh, robot controller itself, which is this unit. So now what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and see how we're going to start mounting this. Okay, now just for future reference, you don't need to have this much wire because when you do mount it, you only need about three, uh, two inches from the motor to where the actual connector is. So we're actually in the clear. We just made it a little bit longer in case we needed to do anything else. We want to do something different. And, you know, that's about it. Uh, that's really the main reason. So again, this does not mount on nicely, meaning flush, because it makes some contacts with the... Uh, with some of these things here, but luckily there's not, and it looks like they actually accounted for it, it's not going to be touching anything, any of the gears or whatnot, so we're in the clear with that one. Okay, so yeah, that's going to mount on just nicely, just like that. Yeah, so we're good to go. Yeah, that'll fit nicely. Okay, so let me just kind of uh, move some of my soldering equipment out of the way here. Backtrack where we were. So we finished off with building the tracks, getting the wheels ready. Now we're getting ready to put everything together. And as I said earlier, you need to have the robot controller, these aluminum, contro these aluminum pieces, and the gearbox ready to go. So when we start building this, it'll all make up the frame of the actual robot. That's why we need to have it all ready. I was a little skeptical at first when we got when we got this because the, the you know this would actually be holding the robot together. But luckily the robot's pretty small so it shouldn't be a big deal. And it actually makes construction a lot simpler. So far the hardest part we've had about this was putting together the gearbox and we did solder these. So that's the hardest part. Everything else is pretty straightforward. Okay. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be so the first step now will be on step four, which is we're going to be putting the gearbox onto the robot shop rover PCB. Now what they actually recommend is to insert them later. We actually already went ahead and inserted them. No big deal. So we have this there, and what we're going to actually do is we're going to go back to our our gearbox kit, and we actually put all the screws that it came with together in a little baggie, because we're going to reuse some of those to actually mount this, and we're only going to need two screws, and we're definitely going to need some nuts for that one. So. So what do we got here? So we have two screws here and two nuts. Now it's the one that looks with the, that has a smaller thread and they're not self-tapping. And that's the one that we're going to be using. Now it doesn't really say which way up and down. So what we're going to do is just kind of choose the easier one for us, which is we're going to mount the screws underneath. 
seems like that would be the easier one for us right now. And go ahead and just kind of hand tighten these guys in right now. Now again, be careful while you're handling this. We're experienced with handling circuit boards and whatnot, so we feel confident that we're not going to fry anything. However, uh, we recommend that you <coughs> ground yourself or at least read up on how to not fry your boards by touching them. We've made sure that each time we're static free and uh, we're not uh, going to damage anything. This is just a little tricky simply because my hands are not as small as they used to be. Step back here for a moment, make sure that these nuts fit these screws. It might be that they don't, we're gonna have to use the other screws. Oh, there they go. Okay, so this fits accurate. So let's backtrack again. Let's start back up. I'm going to use my other hand. So again, I'm just and tightening them. So that's one. I'll loosen this up a bit. I'm just going to loosen one of these here. Just basically means you're gonna have to wiggle them around a little bit to get them to fit in right. But once I readjusted it a smidge, it was uh, slipping in right away. And what I'm doing here is I'm just kind of hand tightening it, holding my finger underneath the other screw. The other side of the screw at least to 
kind of just give it a quick hand tighten. And once you feel like you can't hold it anymore, then I suggest switching off to your screwdriver like I'm just doing right now. Now these are the times where you could actually use one of those uh, third hands in the sense of, you know, the ones you buy at Radio Shack with the uh, with the soldering, used for soldering and whatnot. Just makes your life a lot easier. You know, that's just not sitting right there though. Yeah, sure enough. One of the connectors for the uh, power switch is hitting the plastic. But that really shouldn't matter that much because there you go. Okay, so that's on pretty well. You can see it goes like that. Okay. Okay, so that's in there pretty good. So now the next step, I think I see why they said put the motors in last. Having all these wires running all over the place is kind of becoming a my big pain. So let me just go ahead and see if I can take these out. Should just pop right out. But it doesn't. And that's two. Okay. So I took out the motors for now. Let's put those over here. We've mounted this properly. I'm assuming we're in need to be able to. Yep, sure enough this doesn't sit right and it's interfering with the gears so we're gonna have to fiddle around with that now let's take these back off <laughs> 